All right, here we are. Back to it. Uh, new new location, everybody. Uh, if you didn't know, did a little move to a new podcast studio. Um, out of my house, actually, uh, which is nice. So, might be a little changes. I'm going to put some shelves up and do a little bit of um, decor here as we go. But uh, today's going to be fun. We have uh, Ryan uh, Wilkoff over here with a, a business that when he told me about it and we talked about, I was like, that is not only intelligent, uh, but also you're battling a big battle against some deep pockets. And I'm excited to get his, uh, you know, his business out here and talking through it and excite you all because I know that our guests really love uh, the energy sector and really love green energy and giving back. So this is what this is going to be about. So without further ado, Ryan, uh, why don't you just do a brief intro of yourself uh, and then let's get into it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. Congratulations on the new studio. Looks pretty awesome. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, we're we're a work from home company ourselves, but it feels good to to get out, you know, sometimes and, and have that that feel. So looks good. Um, yeah. So my name is Ryan. Um, I'm the founder of Forever Flight Worldwide. Uh, we are a small business dedicated towards ending the aviation industry's pollution and the holistic strategies needed towards you know getting there. Uh, we were founded during COVID when I was sort of graduating. I, I was an aerospace engineer myself, but um, the industry is adapting and has been for the last only couple of years, unfortunately. And so there are other jobs in this industry that are needed. And I took it upon myself to start our small business to help sort of half of this problem of, of ending the industry's pollution, which is on the airport infrastructure side of things and helping airports immediately save money and also immediately reduce their emissions. And a lot of people don't always think that it's possible. But, uh, luckily with uh, a lot of the recent sort of events in the renewable industry, um, Renewable energy is now cheaper than fossil fuel, and so we have, we really don't have a you know good business case why we're still on fossil fuels. Um, so you know we're helping this industry adapt the best you know that we can as a small business. Absolutely, and when we get down to it, really the the two huge polluters of the world are our shipping industry and um you know our aviation, right? Um, those are the two that really pollute uh, the world. My, my son always loves to say, hey, dad, why do you drive a truck and why do you fill up with gas? And I'm like, yes, but my, my little truck is not doing anything compared to what our aviation or, you know, our shipping um, with all our major ships are doing. What drove you to wanting to get into this industry? Um, and specifically, because now you're, that you're in Austin, you know, oil and gas is kind of a, uh, somewhat of a big deal down there. Uh, what made you want to get into it? And then also what made you want to attack it from being in Texas where you're fighting, you know, an uphill battle? Yeah, absolutely. I would say the main reason that I was interested in this industry is, um, you know, during COVID, we did have a little bit break of pollution in that there was an interruption in the normal business cycle. And so we had a chance to sort of look at things and reset. And when I was looking at things as someone that about to enter the workforce, um, I looked, um, you know, at projections and the aviation industry is projected to continue this sort of trend until 2050. And that is a number that, you know, is really far away and doesn't seem very realistic. So if we can do whatever we can to, to bring that number to as soon as possible, I think we should. And so that is the reason I'm, I'm personally working in aviation myself. Um, I don't have any family in aerospace, so it's sort of just like, they're sort of surprised, but um, you know, that sort of what was my perspective coming at as a recent graduate from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So what is Forever Flight doing right now? What is the main focus and push? Obviously fundraising, by the way, all small companies, we all need money, okay? 
funding is always a big deal. Outside of that, what is what is your big focus and push right now? Absolutely. Well, our you know our goal is to grow half these days, but um, I think that is healthier as a company uh, in most circumstances. Um, uh, and so what we're doing is you know developing a series of tools to help airports adjust their infrastructure and plan for the future and save money right now by using all these recent bills that have been passed by the um, ingenious Terry Holm and her team and um, sort of, you know, helping fund, you know, every transfer, every sector's transformation. Um, these, these recent bills have, have taken uh, a lot of help. Um, sorry, a lot of stress away from, you know, all the small businesses and sort of concentrated on you know now that we have tax incentives so that big companies can actually make sustainability strides how can each sustainability company sort of find its you know niche core and then become a master of that and get us to the place that we want to be is sort of the recent developments i've been seeing and and so um I would say, you know, the reason that we work is just to do our part to find holistic strategies and, and sort of bring them to the forefront of the industry so that we can be, you know, leaders instead of, you know, way behind the times. Absolutely. So what can airports do right now? Right. Uh, obviously, technology is going to change. We all know that part. But like what specifically are you talking about like they can do right now to to change or to improve at least? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, there's countless mechanisms. There's over a hundred tactics airports need to take to holistically, you know, sort of reduct, reduce their pollution. However, you know, the ones immediately use these recent bills and incentives to build your own renewable energy. Um, you want to eliminate your, you know, costs. Um, electricity is a huge one. You know, HVAC in hot places during the summer. Um, you know, that is a large concentration of terminal energy use and having, you know, a functional source of your own energy to, you know, sort of take a chunk out of your total expenses is a great, you know, first step. Um, you can electrify the ground servicing equipment so that when you're taxiing to the, uh, you know, planes in and out, um, it's electrified. And also, you I need, <coughs> excuse me, you need to be looking into what actual fuel sources of the future are true zero emission. Um, we don't want to be having any greenwashing in this industry. Um, and so, you know, make sure that you're getting your information from reliable sources and not necessarily only, you know, the airlines. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely. So what have you seen recently in terms of, you know, airports and airlines pushing towards, uh, the green energy have you seen much yet with these new bills or kind of is it a feel out process currently um i think the ira in particular had a large effect on this industry it gave green hydrogen incentives so that we could stock up our production and look into green hydrogen for larger planes um and so just because of that i think alaska airlines just dumped a lot of money into Zero Alvia, uh, you know, a company out of the United Kingdom as, um, you know, leading the charge of the future for larger planes and also some commercial planes, uh, sorry, smaller commercial planes. But I think the um, battery industry is really leading the charge for, um, you know, smaller and private jet planes. Um, as the battery industry creates stronger batteries, it makes it easier to have electric planes. It's pretty simple. So, you know, following them is a good way of staying up to date on how the small and mid-size electric plane industry will be developing over these next couple of years. An electric plane. An electric plane. That's crazy. I feel like we're getting closer to the Jetsons. I promise you. Um, if you. If you read up on some of these EV toll companies as well, it feels pretty pretty Jetsons, um, you know, their functionality is still being evaluated. And what I think will turn out will be, we'll just eventually replace cars with them and sort of turn into the Jetsons. So I think you're right. Yeah, here we come. 
we're, we're going to be the Jetsons. Finally, childhood dreams will come to life. I'm excited. So business wise, uh, talk us through, obviously you are a startup and where you're at, but talk us through what your hardest battles are and what you, you know, what you want help from the audience, obviously word of mouth and brand awareness and all that's great, but what do you need to, in order to grow and to fulfill your mission? Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, it needs to be a little of an increase of knowledge within the industry. Um, you know, we love spreading, you know, the knowledge that, that we can to, to every airport here in the States and then eventually beyond of, you know, what the true zero emission solutions will be and, and what are um, their functionalities. Um, and so how we, you know, express that is, um, you know, through our toolkit, we, you know, share it with, with the teams that we can, but obviously we have limited resources ourselves. Uh, we are a, a Gen Z team. I, I like saying that uh, we're all under the age of 26. And so we, we, you know, we're keeping our expenses extremely low, obviously, just, you know, trying to find, um, you know, growth off of our current Puerto Rican project. We, we working with the Department of Energy to find holistic solutions and local job growing solutions with the Department of Energy in Puerto Rico and immediately grow solar energy there. Um, so, you know, building off um, our tools uh, will help us um, efficient, sorry, make our process more efficient and sort of help us expand into new markets because um, we try and limit our travel. We try, you know, to do our part to, you know, to example of our company gives good solutions um but also you know does their part to limit their impact as well so the more resources we can have um the more tools we can build and the more communities we can help so i think um just believing in you know these sort of young ideas and startups that are coming to the forefront um and there's also other industries that you know, we love to also showcase um, the green hydrogen startups in the boating industry and in the shipping industry, and also the automating of e-cargo. Sorry. So that means like instead of shipping and then boating, you'll just have a drone take it to the location and limit, uh, you know, emissions by over 70%. So these are just the types of solutions that, uh, you know, need to be at the forefront of the discussion. And I think also in general, young people need to have more of a say in sort of the environmental discussions going on at both the state, federal and local levels, um, just because of sort of the ways we can help um, are sort of underutilized and, um, you know, we, we won't so we can. So uh, I think Believing in, in these sort of new ideas coming to the forefront really inspires us to keep going and build off of our progress so far. Yeah, and let's uh, let's talk talk about that, right? You're a Gen Z; everyone's under 26. That's one just phenomenal to have this insight and drive to do what you want to do. Uh, but also, you are young, right? That is going to be um a non-starter for some or you don't have experience and you, the, all you've probably heard it a thousand times all of the reasons why uh it won't work uh ultimately that's the reason it will work your generation uh which is not you know i guess i'm not that much older but i am older um your generation this is where we can see these gains happen what has been the biggest hurdle in getting into the correct meetings and the correct minds, because really it's going to take politics. You know, this, it's going to take bills and stuff like that to continue to get past and continue to be on the forefront. Uh, what's your biggest hurdle currently within that atmosphere? Yeah, I would say establishing ourselves as, you know, a long-term company is always very hard with limited experience in aerospace, a slow moving industry. And so that has been our greatest hurdle. Um, you know, we love to share ideas and holistic strategies that are also healthier for everyone involved. Um, but, you know, you can only have so much say when 
you know, have little experience. So, um, sorry, what was the second part of your question? So what's the, what's the biggest hurdle, um, in getting into these conversations that you're uh, having right now? Yeah, I think it's also, I mean, there are ways for, you know, everyday people to get involved in environmental movements and there, there, there's, um, countless Slack channels and programs and initiatives out there. So if you do care, there are ways to get involved. I think also, especially um, as a sort of young person during COVID, just believing in yourself was, was a little tricky. And, you know, you definitely had countless times of self-doubt because, I mean, you know, what is, you know, a young person to say in, you know, long-term policy, but you also have to think of more creative strategies um, and be sort of more savage than, you know, the established, um, you know, companies, because the facts are, you know, renewable energy creates three times as many jobs as fossil fuels, and um, they're cheaper now. So there's really no reason to not, you know, try and reduce pollution. And so, um, you know, having, um, you know, that confidence to, to say what you're saying, and also be a little bit of an oddball in an industry that's been polluting for a while um, and, you know, showing the actual true solutions, just, uh, just being that little bit extra of, you know, creativity where we've had to use a little bit of our um, social media skills that we've gained having it all our lives and, um, you know, uh, utilizing free software as well, Zoom, uh, LinkedIn, and, um, you know, pretty much wherever your customers are, uh, you know, you sort of have to follow. So um, that is sort of how we, we grew. Um, you know, we're definitely still small, but, um, you know, having that sort of gut urge to say, oh, yeah, I'm actually in some circumstances. I'm not perfect, but I know that, you know, I can you must guide you on this pathway. So talk about what... At the end of this, and I don't know if you, you know, you end up getting sold, you, you know, you retire at the age of 107, whatever this looks like, what is success to you and your company? What does that mean? Is it, is like percentage of pollution redu reduced? I know you're not going for hundred percent because that's probably not very realistic, but what is success look like for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, it sort of changes every day as a young person because, you know, we're still, you know, we're not fully there with everything. And, you know, especially during COVID, we were a little isolated. So every day, you know, you sort of think of new things that you want to do with your life. But um, I would say that company, we have two key performance indicators. And just for me as someone, you know, that grew up and I was able to go to college, it's like giving local jobs is one of indicators um local job in renewable energy growth so one of our key goals of the puerto rican project was reversing brain drain in puerto rico um and how we can you know grow long-term jobs there um and then the second KPI is you know tracking emission reductions over time you know when we started the industry was expected to pollute until 2050 and so we want to bring it down to you know i guess as soon as possible and so, you know, we track expected pollution over, um, you know, what we uh, sort of provide in elimination of long-term pollution. And I think how that core of, you know, sustainability in our business model definitely gives us a little bit of an edge these days as a small, lean company. I like that answer. That's a good answer. That is also an answer that isn't like specific to a number or anything because there's a lot of variables in what you're doing there isn't this isn't a very clear cut one plus one equals two situation yeah absolutely and i will say i mean there are other companies out there that do help uh you know reduce emissions there are in other engineering companies but we're primarily focused on aviation i think that gives us a little bit of an edge um uh, in in some of these new uh emerging commercial opportunities um, but yeah, I, once again, will say, I appreciate your, your time today. And this was, uh, it was great sharing our, what little progress we we've started with, but you know, how those tools build off each other and 
can lead to some big things. Absolutely. And we, we love having you on. We're going to have you on and follow your journey uh, throughout without a doubt. Um, it's important to continue your message uh, one way or another to be loud as possible because uh, what you're going after is one, just impressive, let alone something I wouldn't do. Um, and two, it's, it's something that for our planet needs to be done ultimately. Like it just needs to happen. So appreciate you being in that fight and fighting every day with your team. Uh, even though you're young, uh, you guys don't have as many wounds as the rest of us. So, uh, you get a fight and wake up the next day, right? I talk about this. What, what, let's back up. Let's get a little personal with it real quick. Wife and I went out with some friends. Um, we're 34. And we went out drinking. We started at 9 o'clock, got home, went to bed at like 1.30. Takes a few days to, to get back up. You, you probably can still bounce around the next day or within 48 hours. And that's the same thing that goes for business. You're going to take some licks and there's going to be things that you're going to bounce back from that the rest of us, it would hurt a little more. So take that with the, as much as you want there, uh, but continue that great fight and always ask. Uh, I know I'm going to connect you with some people. Um, after this as well. And we look forward to hearing back from you here in you know, maybe a couple quarters and seeing what uh, you've accomplished. Yeah, thank you so much. No worries. Um, you know, anyone feel free to follow us on our website or our LinkedIn, but you know, our, our real progress is because of our team. And so I definitely want to thank our team and also give a shout out to the CrowdSolve platform, which helped us get here. Platform, excuse me, a platform for other Eco entrepreneurs, it's uh, I would highly suggest towards building your idea from scratch. And I will say, um, thank you. Yeah, how do you feel about the uh, Falcons draft this year? Though it was a it was an interesting one. No, yeah, it was. I don't like taking a running back eight. The preceding program was sponsored by Black Mammoth. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Black Mammoth. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Black Mammoth website www.blackmammoth.com All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice due to various factors including changing market conditions. The information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Black Mammoth do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature and is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Past performance is not indicative of future results.